Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to another episode of Marketo Fu. Uh, my name is Joe Wrights, and today we are going to discuss um, why every video sounds exactly the same when I start it. No, <laughs> um, I need to think of a better intro. But anyway, um, today what I want to cover is kind of uh, back in episode six, if you recall, back in the, the basic slash beginners track, uh, we talked about just smart campaigns 101, like uh, just the very bare bones. Here's what a smart list is. Here's what the flow is. Here's what how you activate it or schedule it, uh, both for triggers and batches. Today, what I want to kind of spend a little time on is um, really what are some of the more advanced flow steps you can use in a smart campaign. So I'm going to kick us over to Marketo real quick, and this will just be a very quick, uh, I will preface this saying this is a bad example that I just concocted like five minutes prior to turning this video on. So Yay, live video. Um, but here we go. I still love that so much. Anyway, okay, so um, back in Marketo. So I've, uh, you know, th this has come up recently for a uh, several clients where we do a little bit of data normalization. So as data comes into the database, we want to make sure it's getting cleaned up. So to help kind of illustrate a couple of the things I want to talk through today, uh, a few of the flow step examples. Um, I built a couple smart campaigns, and we're going to start here on 01, the cleverly named Start Here. And when we look at the smart list, you know, I've got it set up for you know something basic like a data value changes. Um, you know, a recent client, uh, someone I'm still working with, uh, they they don't want to overwrite the job title field. Like whatever comes in, obviously they want to keep that as you know that's the person's job title, so it's it's good data uh, when they fill out a form or or something like that. But they want to. They wanted to map to a job function so that they could, you know, better message to leads based on like, you know, putting them into a, a predefined segment that they already have built out in their instance. So, what we have here is just a smart list listening for. Hey, whenever a job title changes, so if it goes from null to some value or uh, is updated in any way uh, in Marketo or Salesforce, what's going to happen in the flow? Is a few things. Now, the I'm going to talk through each of these flow steps in in kind of a uh, uh, a quick deep dive on each one. Probably the most useful flow step you will ever encounter in Marketo is the change data value. And this is exactly what it sounds like. There's not really a whole lot to evangelize here other than when I have a, uh, a data value. So uh, I can add I can add several choices. I could have just changed it. So uh, if the job title changes, I could have changed job function to executive. But in this example, what I wanted to show is you can add a choice by clicking this button, and then one of these things will pop up. And then what you can do that's kind of cool is you can say if you know the job title or whatever field is contains you know whatever whatever logic you uh, you want to use, uh, but in this case, keeping with our job function job title to job function mapping example, uh, you know if it contains VP or president, and you know real world there was like a lot more of these types of scenarios, but just just to illustrate a basic one, if the job title contained VP or president, what we would want to write for the job function, which is a custom field that I just created for this example, we want to write that to executive. Uh, if it was like CEO or CMO or CRO or whatever whatever C-suite, uh, we could have we could have just as easily mapped the job function to C-suite or um, you know practitioner or uh, Specialist, whatever, whatever uh, decision maker, whatever we wanted to do that makes sense for the instance, we could we could use a change data value to basically map that out. So that's a really cool flow step just to have in your back pocket for about a million and one reasons. Um, so it's not super advanced, but it's probably, like I said, the most useful thing you will encounter in Marketo, especially when it comes to data normalization. Um, moving on down to the next step, uh, there's this remove from flow uh, flow step. And basically, the really cool way to use this one is, uh, you know, the next two I, I'll, I'll caution with. These are things that you want to use very, very sparingly. But you, uh, if, if for example, you have a smart campaign that you want to qualify broadly, you want a lot of people to qualify for it, but you don't want every flow step to apply to them. Uh, that's when it. That's when it makes a lot of sense to use a remove from flow uh, step. So basically, what we're saying here is, you know, if we're doing a little bit of uh, account-based marketing, like in in this in this case, where if so, we we write their job function as executive. If their company name is not X Y Z, we're going to stop them right here and just say remove them from this flow. That's it. We're done. Uh, and that's that's basically what this says. If the company name is not X Y Z Corp, 
Uh, we're going to remove them from the flow of the campaign ops data normalization start here, which is exactly where we are. Tracking? Cool. Now, if for some reason we wanted to do something different with those leads, uh, we could have just done it right here and you know kept the flow going. But because I wanted to show you what a request campaign is and how it works, uh, I added this step here, where basically if they are a lead from XYZ Corp, we're going to request another campaign to run. Now, this kind of daisy chaining, just as a best practice of smart campaigns, is not um, something Marketo actively encourages you to do on a regular default basis. Uh, it's something that, you know, for advanced logic purposes, um, like at a, uh, at a, a in the past, I, I, I recently had a, um, you know, two sales orgs that technically were at the same company, but kind of had a little bit of competing, uh, competing nature to just how the, the relationship was set up, you know, how, based on where the leads were and how the leads were routed. So if they were in X postal code, they got uh, to, to division A of the company. If they were in B postal code, they got division B. And it was just very, very odd. And basically, we used a lot of remove from flow and a lot of request campaigns to make sure that leads in the right places got assigned to the right people. Um, now, this this example is is a little uh, <laughs> oversimplified, but basically, what I want you to know about smart cam or request campaigns is don't make it your default thing. Uh, try to use these very very sparingly. Uh, there's some technical reasons on the back end having to do with the Marketo API and like how many calls and make and stuff and. You know, what, what you can do if you do this too often is inadvertently create race conditions amongst your smart campaigns where you, so someone flows through this, they get, they request the campaign. Now something else could be running that's interfering with another campaign running and which one's going to finish first? We don't know. And then you cause a bunch of errors and mistakes and yeah. So all of that, just to say request campaigns are kind of a big hairy beast, but um, don't, don't be afraid to use them necessarily, but don't, I, I've, I've also heard, you know, horror stories of people linking like 32 smart campaigns together via request campaigns when it's just, you know, an asinine way to go about setting up your instance, um, just to put it perfectly bluntly and mildly hilariously. So, um, but anyway, so all that cautionary tale aside, when someone from XYZ Corp has a job title change and it contains VP, and they are an XYZ Corp, we're going to request the next campaign, which is basically going to cause this 02 requested smart campaign to run. And uh, this thing uh, ha actually has to be turned on and, and activated for, for that other flow step to be able to pick it up. So if you're ever building out a request campaign, just know that. But in the smart list of this, this request campaign, we have to say, um, you know, campaign is requested. That's how you trigger a request campaign. So uh, it's going to say Marketo Flow Action. We could add any additional filters in here we wanted to to, to further uh, qualify the smart list and limit the number of people that can flow through. Uh, but then, you know, this would run like any other smart campaign. So in the flow here, um, in, like in this example, we're doing a little bit of account-based marketing. So I'd want to send some kind of alert to the lead owner right away, probably something a little more custom. Uh, this is just one I happen to grab. But um, something a little custom saying like, hey, we've got a decision maker potentially at you know, this, this big account that we're trying to, uh, to land, uh, we could wait, add a wait step, add them to an engagement program, send them an email right away. We could do any number of things, but um, basically all you need to know about request campaigns, apart from like, you know, don't do it all the time, is uh, it, it enables us to kind of connect these two and let them run in sequence. Now, you can start to see if we did that a lot, that would be, you know, some load on, on Marketo doing some heavy lifting and then also you know, what I mentioned about race conditions. But in any event, um, you know, that is uh, where I'm going to stop the screen share and say that, you know, basically to recap, what we covered is we talked about, um, you know, change data value as a very, um, very useful flow step in any Marketo implementation. You can use it to normalize data or uh, fix things you break. Um, you know, I've, I've, built a lot of things with my hands uh, with my dad and one thing I learned is we are not carpenters but we are really really good at covering up our mistakes and it's a very poor workman that blames his tools so you take those two things together and you realize this change data value thing is going to make you uh, be able to salvage any um, any mistakes you may or may not make not that I've made mistakes but people do <laughs> so um, 
And then the, the next one we covered, aside from change data value, was uh, remove from flow, which is useful if you want to limit the number of people that can go through an entire smart campaign, the flow, uh, anyway. So uh, if you want some things to not apply, for example. Um, and then, and I'm just thinking of millions of examples of ways I've seen that used now. Uh, but I don't want to muddy the point. And then finally, we covered off on request campaigns, which are a very useful tool when needed, but not something that should be part of your default build in any uh, any series of campaigns. So use them sparingly. It's kind of like salt. Um, don't uh, don't over season. But um, but yeah. Other than that, these are some of the more advanced flow steps. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to hit them up in the comments or. Uh, Better yet, to start a discussion in the Marketo community in at uh, nation.marketo.com. And uh, let me know what else you want to see on an episode, future episode of Marketo Foo. And we will, uh, I, I've, I've got a short list now from the, uh, the first post. Uh, so thanks to those of you that have contributed some topics. And we will talk again very soon. Thanks.